going to teach this morning from Ephesians chapter 1, no, Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. He said, now while you're looking that up, he said, I want to make a statement. Of all the men that have ever walked this planet, not counting the Lord Jesus himself, of course, but of all men that have ever walked this planet, there has never been a man of greater impact than the Apostle Paul. And I agree 100%. And they ignore him, they denigrate him, and they dis speak disgustingly of him. And I don't know how many letters and phone calls I've gotten that said the same thing. Less I used to just detest Paul until you've shown me differently. And he is the apostle of the Gentiles. And remember this, he is a chosen vessel from the Lord from heaven that now God is going to take a whole different approach. Instead of going to the Gentile world through Israel, which was the original plan, he deviated. And again, I'm going to come back to the game of football. After many, many years of only four men touching that ball, all of a sudden, in the middle 20s, they changed the rules enough that they introduced a whole new concept of football. Now, you football fans, what was it? The forward pass. And that's the way I like to, if I may, make the analogy. Here, down through the first 4,000 years of human history, God went First, of course, to the general population, but then starting with Abraham, he went only to the nation of Israel all those years. But then starting with the Apostle Paul, he turned to the Gentile world. And that's where you and I are tonight. This is our Apostle. And beloved, if you are a Bible reader, if you want to read a certain portion every day, stay in Paul's epistles. Now, all the rest is the word of God. I don't take that away, but it's not written to us. It has no relevancy for us directly. It's history. It's background. It leads up like I've done tonight. I came up through the Old Testament and showed you how this glorious kingdom has been promised in the nation of Israel. But when Israel rejected it, God turned to the Gentiles, not with Moses, but with one like him the Apostle Paul. All right, now then I'm going to give you four verses of scriptures to confirm that. And remember that Paul writes only by virtue of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And every word he writes is just as inspired as what Jesus said himself in the, in the four Gospels. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, goodness, I'm just about down to 7.30. Oh, well. This is more important than coffee or break anyway. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. All got it? Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. See that? So for your devotions, for your doctrine, for your Christian life, you go to Paul's epistles. You don't go back to Isaiah or Jeremiah. Those are prophecies. And it hasn't got anything to do with us whatsoever because we're going to be gone before those prophecies unfold anyway. All right, now then let's just go a little further to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am a follower of Christ. So there's the process. Christ is at the head of the line. Of course he is. But we follow Christ by following Paul. And I always like to use the analogy of our, of our Western Calvary when they were going out to make an attack and whatever. At the head of the line was the officer, then was the first sergeant, and then came the doughboys behind them. All right, that's the file concept of Scripture. All right, now the next one is in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. And again, as I've said on the program many, many times, Paul always writes only to the believer. He doesn't write to the unbelieving world. He writes to you and me with the idea that we take the Word of God. 
out to the unsaved world. Same way with churches. Churches are not meant to be the place to evangelize the lost. Churches are meant to build the body of Christ, to enhance the believer. And that's our sole responsibility. And if we can teach the believer the word of God, he's going to witness whether he feels like it or not. Because I always use again the illustration. If you know an old shade tree mechanic who knows cars forwards and backwards, and you have a question, is he going to put his tail between his legs and walk away? No, sir. He's going to stand up to you and tell you what he knows. Well, that's the way we should become. And I found it through my ministry that when people sit under my teaching over a period of time, they become witnesses. I'll never forget a Presbyterian lady came up one night in my class, McAllister, and she was just bubbling over. At a few days previously, she had a chance to witness to three high school boys. And she said, Les, for the first time in my life, every verse that I needed came to mind. And she said, I just had a ball. And uh, the kids responded. Well, all right, this is the reason now then that we are to be followers of this apostle. All right, verse 17 of Philippians 3. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us, and speaking of himself, as a what? An example. And we are to be a witness as well. Now I'm going to show you one, one, one more that has this whole concept of following the leader, if I can call it that way. And I want you to come back with me to Hebrews. I think it's chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and come down to verse 10. For it became him, speaking of Jesus up there in verse 9, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now, if you do a word search of that word captain, you come to what I like the best, a file, single file, file leader. And that's exactly what Paul refers to. Follow me as I follow the file leader. And beloved, that's where it's at. 